Hi, I'm Kate Frasley, and today I'm going to show you how to use SparkTor to build a better media list. But first, a little bit of background, because you can buy media databases online. There's plenty of companies that offer it. So why not just do that? And if you've used one before, you probably know what I'm going to say, which is that they're usually out of date. You got really high bounce rates on them. You got low deliverability. They're not super reliable. Um, it's more of a spray and pay, pray approach, usually, if you do something like that. Um, it's not just me saying that. If you have a look around online, you can see what people say about media databases that you would just buy. Um, they tend to be not very reliable, usually about three, uh, six months out of date. Some people say more, depending on the sector. Um, and it's just, it's a bit frustrating. Um, at Presley, um, actually, you'll see a lot of the big name PRs suggest the same thing. Um, we recommend that you focus on doing your own research and building up a media list over time of journalists and outlets that you can have a relationship with um, and that really fit the niche that you're targeting. So that's sort of what I'm going to be talking about today um, using Spark Toro. If you haven't seen Spark Toro before, it's an audience research tool. Um, it's not conventionally a PR tool. It's quite a recent thing that we've had since we've had the internet. Um, the point of it is seeing where your audience is spending their time online. And I, I think you can already see how that could be incredibly valuable to you as a PR person. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate for you how you can use it to build your media list. Now, um, I'm going to be using a paid account, but they do have a free account as well. And like I said, there's also other audience research tools available. If you have a look around, I'm sure there's, there's one that you would like for yourself. Um, before I start, um, I would recommend going into the lists area of Spark Toro and creating a list uh, based around whatever topic or audience it is that you're researching. This will just allow you to save um, bits of the research that you find into a list that you can later uh, convert into something that has contact details in it. So um, make sure you do this first. And then we can get started with the research. So the way it works is there are three basic searches you can do. Um, they all take pretty much the same format. They just look at an audience from different angles. So for this example, I'm going to pretend that we are representing a brand that is bringing out a new high protein cereal. So what I'm going to do here is look at an audience that searches for the keyword high protein cereal. That's very literal. Maybe it's a good place to start, but from here we might want to say healthy breakfasts or, you know, keto diets or something like this and see uh, how different audiences uh, look at related, related terms. And when the search is done, basically what you get is a list of online locations that people who search for the keyword high protein cereal also spend their time. So immediately that spits out websites that include blogs, uh, like the number one one here is a, is a blog website, um, as well as brand websites. Um, and this gives you an immediate idea if there are some publishers here, which websites you might want to approach with your story if it's relevant. It also gives you an idea of the keywords that people use alongside high protein cereal. Um, and this is great because it gives you an idea of how you can frame your story to better appeal to the people on the websites. It's not just this list. It, it gets way more in depth. And I think what one of my favorite things about SparkToro is, is that it gives you a list of hidden gems because the main websites might be something like CNN or Wall Street Journal, something like really high tier that's going to be hard to target. Um, but the hidden gems are, tend to be a bit smaller, tend to be a bit easier to approach, so you have a better chance of winning coverage there. Um, as well as that, they'll show you um, a list of media networks and give you an order for how popular they are with this audience. So if I'm looking at people who are into high protein cereal, looks like YouTube is number one for them. So maybe I'll want to look at doing more video content or targeting YouTube creators when I'm trying to spread my story. And in fact, for most topics now, ever since the recent Google updates, YouTube is number one, or at least very high up there. Video content's a big thing. It's kind of why I'm making this video. Um, the same thing goes for all these social accounts. It will um, show you the most popular web uh, social media accounts for this search term. 
but it'll also show you the hidden gems, which again could surface some influences that talk about your topic. And what's really cool as well is it'll give you trending keywords. So again, this can help you have an idea of how to frame your story so that it's relevant now. Usually the trending keywords are relevant for a few months. Um, and yeah, it can just give you a different way of telling the story um, for, for more recent coverage. What I really like as well is um, not only does it give you YouTube channels and podcasts that again, you can approach this, this, this isn't the full list. If you click through, there's a lot more, more there. It also shows you the subreddits where this audience is going to have conversations about this topic, which is great because that means you or people in your team can go and actually engage with them, actually speak with these people, get content ideas, but also just relate to them and get your story out there that way. So that's, that's how you would use the keyword research side of things. Um, then the other searches, like I said, they work in a pretty similar way. I'm just going to show you one of them before I show you how the lists work. So um, on the previous search, you saw that the number one result was a website called eatingwell.com. So on this search, we're looking at the audience of that website. And there's a few benefits to this, like uh, just for, for sort of brand research purposes, it's great at looking at what kind of audience visits your website, what kind of audience visits your competitor website, if maybe you want to do some retargeting ads on them or try to poach them in some way. But for media relations, I think this is really cool because it helps you understand the audience of the people you're going to be pitching. And you can even tell them this during the pitch. So here I might spend, uh, if I was pitching someone at eatingwell.com, I could say, okay, right. So I have a story about my protein cereal. I've done some research. And I can see that the people who visit your website, like your frequent readers, they're also interested in recipes, like a lot. And they also are interested in healthy recipes that will help them lose weight. So not just protein, but specifically healthy snacks. Um, healthy snacks that will, will help you lose weight. So I can say, here is how I can frame my story knowing those facts. So here's how my cereal can fit into this marshmallow cereal, keep, like, you know, those little snacks, that sort of recipe. And if you eat those for breakfast instead of this other cereal or whatever, it'll help you lose weight, help you go to the gym and like get more energy out that way. Um, and that's a much more effective pitch than just saying, hi, I've got a new cereal. Do you want to write about it? Um, again, with the search, like the previous one, you get all the same information, but one step removed. So you have the hidden gems again. Um, and here, because the we already know that most people who are reading Eating Well are probably going to be interested in the keyword search that we did before. So in the uh, high protein cereal search, I can assume that some of the people who are on recipe tin eats are probably also going to be interested in my topic. So maybe then I'll work with a marketing team to get some ads out on that on uh, those other sites. Uh, maybe I'll approach um, one of these sites that's one removed and see if we can do like sh some shared content, a blog post, something like that. And again, yeah, with the hidden gems, they'll be slightly easier to approach than the big, than big names. Same thing for uh, the hidden gems around social media. And again, with the keywords, it's one step removed. So again, you're broadening the topics you can talk about with relation to your product. And same again here, you can approach those new YouTube channels, approach those podcasts. Um, what's cool is if, for example, I have these social accounts, I'm going to look at more hidden gems that were found for people who are visiting eatingwell.com. If I want to then say, okay, I think well, I'll have a look at this person. Yeah, it looks like they fit the the story I'm trying to tell. It looks like the audience is a match from what I can tell. Um, this person as well, and this one. I can then say, okay, add that to my high protein cereal list. Great, and those are stored for later. And I'll just keep doing this as I'm doing my research, as I'm doing different searches and gradually build up that list. Um, the final one, the final search, uh, I'll just very briefly show you, it works exactly the same way, um, except research an audience that uses these words in their bio. If I, from the previous searches, I can see that they're looking for ways to lose weight and high protein foods, I can sort of assume that 
they're probably going to the gym and then wanting to eat protein because of that and working out there. Um, so I can use the keyword that has come up in the previous research for social media accounts and see how people describe themselves and then plug that in here. Or I can look at my own customer base and see how they self-describe um, and just uh, the words I associate with my audience and do the research here that way. And again, go through and see what terms those people are searching for. So now I'm even further removed. I'm not, not even talking about recipes anymore. I'm talking about, all right, maybe I'm going to work with um, a YouTube creator who's talking about fitness and help them work out a fitness routine and then somehow involve my cereal, right? So it was saying like, okay, we're doing this fitness routine, but before that, this is the cereal I'm eating, here are my gains. Um, so I hope you can see, I'm not gonna go through every single example because it gets a bit samey, but you just keep iterating with different websites, different topics, and gradually building up your list of uh, related websites and accounts, and that'll help you get the story out not just to your direct audience, but to people related to them and really, really impact on your reach. Um, once you're happy with your list, you can get it out of here. Um, it's over here, it's segregated by website, social media, whatever. I'm just gonna have a look at the social media ones. Um, and what you can do is you can export them into a CSV file. So SparkToro has, um, it's got Hunt.io functionality built in. So it gets basic contact details like email address um, and social accounts. And you can export that and then plug that into whatever tool you're using to manage your contacts. So I'm going to use Presley for this, of course. Um, and I'm just going to upload the CSV I downloaded. I opened it briefly to um, make sure the email column was labeled email, you know, a bit of housekeeping, added a column for tags, just so that once they're imported into the CRM, I'll be able to easily uh, filter them by, for example, Foodie Influencer or SparkToro, just because then I'll know where I got those contact details from. Um, and once I'm happy that the fields in my spreadsheet match up with the fields in my CRM, I can import them and they'll be all, all ready to go. Actually, I already did this earlier, so I'm just going to go over here. Um, and from my CRM, I'll be able to send them a pitch straight away, um, start leaving notes about what they're interested in, um, our previous relationship, that sort of thing. And if I want to send an email campaign to all of them, I could do that and just start reaching out, basically. This is a very small sample size. I didn't want to spend too much time on this. Um, but I'm sure you can tell that if you keep using an audience research tool like SparkToro, you can build up over time very niche audiences that you can approach for um, different angles on your stories. So that's all from me today. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, send me a message or leave a comment. We do also have a lot of other guides um, on our website, including things like if you're not super familiar with Reddit, we have a guide on how to use Reddit for PR and how not to use Reddit for PR. There's a lot of ways you should use Reddit for PR or marketing. Uh, but come on, have a look. Uh, we also have a free trial if you don't currently have a, a, a CRM to use and you want to try doing something like this, uh, we've got a two-week free trial and you can uh, start using it and sending pictures straight away, no strings attached. That's it. Have a good day. See you next time. Bye.